Hi, welcome to What the Flick. I am Christy. That is Alonzo. That is Matt. Who boy, are we oh. deep, deep in the thick of holiday movie season <sighs> with a movie that is a glittery package underneath your tree just waiting for you to open it. <laughs> glittery package or lump of coal? And then take mm. it back to the store. Uh, it's the I'm, greatest showman. I have a terrible cold. I came in to review this. Thank you. I can't wait to talk about it with you. But Alonzo will describe to us the Hugh Jackman P.T. Barnum extravaganza. <laughs> so there was once a musical called Barnum, and it was generally considered to be pretty good. But no, this is a different one. It's a new one. It's not so good. Take a look. You're still just the Taylor's boy. Better luck with your next job. Those people will never accept us. This isn't the life I promised you. Yeah. People aren't gonna like it if you put us on stage. Oh, I'm counting on it. Well, I believe those are the words of a scoundrel. A showman. Miss Lynn, just a showman. So I have to say, I actually saw oh. Barnum on Broadway when I was like eight years old. My mom and dad took me to New York. With Glenn Close? Yes, with Glenn Close. Nice. And I don't, I don't really remember that Glenn Close was in it, but I remember like this is my first Broadway musical, and this is definitely not that. No. But this has songs from the La La Land guys, which, yeah. they, which if, if you have seen the billboards anywhere in whatever town in which you live, they're touting it like it's almost a sequel to La La Land. I'm like, not from sure. The La La Land okay. guys. So well, this is okay. actually this is shitty enough that now it is. Making me rethink how much I like Lala. <laughs> oh. this, these songs suck. This movie sucks. I hated this movie. Here's the thing. I, I, I was thinking about that. Like La La Land, I think benefits from the fact you know people are like, oh, these people they're not really singing, they're not really dancing. I mean, they are, but they're not doing it in a big sort of Broadway kind of way. And I think that suited the songs really well and made them feel sort of human and like generally Imperfect. coming out of a moment. Yes. Yeah, I, I liked the sort of the smallness of of that scale. These songs, they <laughs> every single song in this movie sounds like the season finale of American Idol. <laughs> it is like the, the 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 like most canned bullshit, like you know, uh, uh, you know stuff. Yeah, all the all, every pop music cliche imaginable. They're all about your dreams and it's big and it's bleh. and the dancing is just like. Okay. I, so here's the, the whole, and it's also the, it's one of those cheap period pieces. So everything looks CG and hermetically sealed. And if they had leaned into right. that and been like, no, this is a theatrical experience, fine. But suddenly somebody will be in an, an actual outdoor scene. You're like, oh yeah, the world. That's this what it is, looks like. It's like here's, the backlot world. I got <laughs> right. So halfway through this movie, I started thinking, oh my god, this this made me think of Scrooge. In that, when you do a movie, a, if you were to do a movie or a television show, spoofing <laughs> the way. TV were to do shitty, wrong-headed <laughs> musicals and spoof terrible ideas. You mean like a Christmas Story Live with songs of, of the same people? So yes. that's oh, that's right. They wrote those songs too. Yeah. So that's what I thought about this. Is I thought they're they're goofing on us, right? Like this is this this <laughs> no. movie felt oh, like no. a satire, meta parody. It felt like a meta parody. Like <laughs> they let's, mean it. Here's, let's do. If you were to write a sketch, write a bit in a movie, where like, oh, we're putting on this. It, it's almost like. The room, in in the sense of like, if we were going to put on a musical that everybody thought was great, but turned out to actually be terrible mm -hmm. and actually be kind of cheap production values, because we're not actually going to really spend that much money on this as a throwaway gag in my otherwise interesting. So this sharp is springtime movie. for Hitler. Isn't kind it? of, yeah. yeah I mean, <laughs> or I guess it's more along the lines of like the dance sequences you see in Scrooge, or maybe some of the. Movies that you hear about in something like Get Shorty, like this is the spoof that somebody, <laughs> somebody mm. with too much ego, this is the spoof of what that person is doing that they think is awesome that everybody else in around them and to show Hollywood insiders like, yeah, look at the cockamamie shit these guys do. Yeah, no, I hated this. It's glossy and it's empty, but um, I would say that the songs which you guys are complaining about are actually the best part of this movie. Oh God, help us! No, it's like the connective tissue stuff in between that doesn't work because they completely sanitize. P.T. Barnum, oh, totally. who was an interesting, complicated guy, and who you know they portray as he's the champion of the you know, outsider because like, he invented the freak show. Well, yeah. So you basically <laughs> just said what I was going to say. Sorry, Thanks oh, so much sorry, for that. sorry, yeah, sorry. No, I mean, but he. They, nice man they, they mm. made, Thank you for mansplaining Broadway musicals to me. Thank you so <laughs> I'm much. I'm gay explaining. Thank Let's you for gay explaining. I, 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 I guess gay explaining is okay, right? Gay explaining is cool. I kind of feel like they're going for like let's appeal to a maybe maybe gay, but people who feel like it out. 
outsider or an outcast or whatever, because like the This Is Me song, which is the big anthem, mm. I mean, every song has that kind of theme, like I'm different and I'm an outsider and I'm gonna be accepted here and it's awesome, but This Is Me really hammers at home. Um, I feel like they are trying to appeal to a crowd that has perhaps felt disenfranchised, but again, it feels, as you say, empty and canned and, and glossy and bombastic. But having said that, like that rewrite the, the stars song is darn catchy. And that's the only number in which they use, Matt is scowling at me off camera. Matt's making faces at me. <laughs> that's the only song in which they actually use that circus space in a way that's like germane I, I, and I, interesting. I like the choreography the of that number, because, but I don't like the song. The song is darn catchy. It's been in my head for like three weeks. But the thing is like, you know, Zac Efron and Zendaya are actually like up in the rafters and they're on trapezes and they're on ropes. And that's the only the, song where they use the space. Every other song, either inside the circus or out on the streets of New York. It's like choreographed the same way. Like they come to you, they come to you and they look away and they look at you again and they come to you and like they maybe they jet out a leg the, or something. The, okay. the only, it's the only, all like in mass. The only <laughs> song that I have stuck in my head is that dreaming with your eyes wide open, but it sounds like a car commercial and it probably will be within Which like two years. Which one is that one? Is that the, it's, it's you And you're dreaming with your eyes wide open. And then your leg juts out. Yeah. So I won't care the songs and they are darn catchy, but the fact that like they tried to sanitize a really complicated, interesting guy is yes. to me the biggest sin, and it's so rushed. It's like all of a sudden, okay, here's another thing. Okay, <laughs> so the ages in this movie. All right, so Hugh Jackman and Michelle Williams, when they are kids, are the same exact age, right? And then they grow up and they become Hugh Jackman and Michelle Williams, but he's like 15 years <laughs> older than her and looks it. Um, yeah, there's a problem. Also, um, Rebecca What's Ferguson's oh, big song, she's not really singing. It's Lauren. Oh, is it not her? Oh, no, no, well. no. It's, it's some Lauren Adler. I'm gonna look it up. Yeah, it's well, let's, who I, I want to talk. I want to talk about that scene because it's hilarious. So, <laughs> Rebecca Ferguson plays Jenny Lind, the the, the Swedish Nightingale, <laughs> which made me think of. Did anybody remember that that web animated series, Hard Drinking Lincoln? Yes. Every episode, they would miss some of them working. Jenny Lind, <gasps> the Swedish Nightingale. <laughs> so, so Barnum, <clears throat> seeking legitimacy, you know, like sets up her her New York debut after she's you know wowed the crowned heads of Europe. <laughs> she comes out on stage, and this is an opera singer. And I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't expecting actual opera or anything in this movie. But she sings a song that is like a, a fucking Celine Dion B side. It, yeah. it is, it it is, is an this American Idol song. It is this crap yeah. ballad. And I was just like, these guys, by the way, wrote also wrote the songs for Dear Evan Hansen, which won the Tony this year, which mm -hmm. I didn't see it, so I don't know what the so songs are like, but. Uh, Oy, with the after but for this and a Christmas story live in the same week, I'm like, y'all need to like have a sabbatical. Real or something. fast, real fast. Lauren Allred is who actually is the one belting out that. That terrible song. No. <laughs> so <laughs> the other thing is, how do you? All right, back to your point about the complicated story, right? How do you do this story and the Chang and Eng, the mm -hmm. conjoined twins mm -hmm. who gave us the term Siamese twins are at best extras in this movie. Oh yeah, like, how They're do you? All Right? The same person. They're all just right. like one idea. The other yeah. thing is, what I mean, did it seem like Tom Thumb was mostly CGI? Like there was something not. There was something that didn't look natural about the way that actor. Oh, I don't and know. Certainly a lot the of voice. It's very off. A lot of it's right, very but off. I mean, it, it feels like I couldn't tell if that was bad CGI. Yeah. It didn't sound like that actor's voice. It seemed like it was really bad ADR. I, it was I mean, and I'll say this, to be fair, nobody goes into a musical biopic expecting like the gritty warts and all version. <laughs> but this is such a like, the, I, the idea of Barnum and yeah. like it so leaves it uh, ignores so much stuff and so you know I don't think they talk about elephants you don't see one until like the last ten minutes of the film mm -hmm. uh, you know except for like a stuffed one early on I mean there's he has such a very checkered and problematic sure. legacy and this movie is just like he was the greatest showman right. yeah, the this is the kind of movie that you, I almost expected to be like yeah you know what and the elephants like being in the circus they uh, loved it yeah. thanks PT. Barnum for putting yes. this in the circus. Yeah, the worst thing he does is that he, because he becomes such a celebrity on his own and his you know, launching and developing his business, like he neglects his family here and there. Yeah. And that's, right. like, and that's the, the daughters worst thing they, who yeah, never age. Daughters also don't age. And when he tries to when he tries to make it big in society, he doesn't let like the bearded lady come to the fancy parties. And, and then stuff. she gets to sing about it. Yeah. So Hugh Jackman wanted to make this movie for like ten years, and if anybody can and should play a role like this, where there is a, a slickness to him and maybe a slight edge of mistrust. 
worthiness, whatever the word is. But also you can sing and dance. It would seem to be Hugh Jackman, but it's just, it's empty. And yeah, you know, uh, him uh, in the Rainmaker or something. Uh, like well, uh, Robert Abel said you could have shot him in his living room performing Barnum <laughs> and it would have been better than this. I will, <laughs> I will give props to Michelle Williams, who is actually bothering to give a performance. Interestingly, in this and in All the Money in the World, she's playing this sort of like, Fancy society, you know, sort of like Eastern Seaboard yes. kind of oh, she's far wife and mother. Who's, yeah, show totally. Yeah, yeah if you're gonna, if you're gonna see her. one, don't make it this one. Yeah, poor Michelle Williams. It's not a, week, a good week for her to be the, the put upon wife and mom. So um, I like the songs. I'm going with 4.8. Wow, really? Yeah. That, that low? And, there, and there's just like a, a big cheesiness that's kind of Because I'm, I'm a four and a half just because for just for the effort of having to, of trying to do an original musical and moments like the choreography of the of the rewrite the stars number and stuff. But oh yeah, that's another thing. The love story between Zach Efron right. and Zendaya. Who are they? Why do they like each other? Apart from the fact that they're like the hottest people in the movie of that age group. Like <laughs> it's not written at all. Anyway, um, 4.8, 4.5. 4.5. Five yeah, and now I feel I'm being way too generous. <laughs> right, the only points for this movie is that A, it's in focus, three, uh, and it's less than two hours, so two and a half. All right, so our number is 3.9, it's 47%. Oh. Um, it's a good family movie if you gotta go see something. Take the word good out of it. No, no, it's not no, good. No, 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 but no, if you're do stuck not say family at the, movie. At the multiplex, this is a thing you can all see. Oh, God. If you're angry <laughs> no, go see Ferdinand, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Bye.